everybody, Wayne Dempsey from the Valve Guys. We're gonna try something new today. Uh, it's Saturday, I'm just sort of hanging out at the shop, trying to clean up a few things and get ready for our uh, week that's coming up here. Um, I'm just gonna spend about two minutes showing you guys what we're working on. Uh, I'm gonna switch the camera here. There we go. So we spent, uh, spent some time <coughs> this week uh, looking at uh, the green car, which hasn't been running a long time. We put a, um, thank you, Cooper, she wants to ask. We put a new sport exhaust on the back of this thing. Um, it doesn't quite fit as well as we'd like it to, um, but we're working on it, and that's the least of our concerns now, because we went to go start it up, and it leaked from about seven different spots. The uh, the fuel lines, I think, were last done in uh, 2008, so they're due. They're really, really due. So we've ordered new fuel lines. We're gonna be going through it probably this week. And uh, we're gonna, we're trying to get it ready for a, for an episode shoot in about two weeks or so. But I don't know if that's gonna be, really, gonna really make it. Here's what we got going on in the front trunk right now. Fuel safe racing cells. It is leaking from the back, leaking from the pump, leaking from everywhere. Okay, go. We also, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we have this RSR, which we have now put on the lift. And we've taken the suspension panel off the bottom here. And there's the fuel pump that uh, uh, leaks all the time. And all of these uh, hoses uh, need to be replaced. But uh, pretty cool view underneath here. So we'll get some more shots of the business end in a little bit when we start working on it. Okay, while I'm out here, here's an interesting thing my son came up with. Um, Kenny wanted to um, do a stencil on the side of his crates here, and I told him that uh, he'd have to get a piece of paper and a razor blade and all that fancy stuff. And my son came up with an interesting idea. Here it is. What he did it's been out in the sun, so it's a little warped now, but he uh, 3D printed this on the 3D printer. Look at that, and it actually came out a lot better than I expected. It's a little, you know, a couple of millimeters thick there, and it's printed in two pieces, taped it together, sprayed. I uh, literally took about 15 minutes with the Photoshop or whatever to do that, and the results are, uh, are pretty good. Yeah, so there's a tip for today. Over here, we've got the Piranha, which we are uh, working on as well uh it's got a speedometer and gas gauge issue I'm trying to figure out exactly what the problem is so i pulled the gauge cluster out hoping it was part of a uh, different type of car but no it's not i'll get a shot of that in a second and uh so trying to check the wire harnesses the ecu is underneath here so we need to pull this out again there's no manual with this car so people ask me why is it up in the air it's up in the air so we can run it and with the wheels up in the air and test the speedometer. So that's pretty much what we are working on today. And we got some more camera equipment in here and stuff like that. Oh, and I bought three cars yesterday. So I'll do a little mini video on that as well. So, oh, let me show you guys the, uh, the gauge cluster for the Piranha that is all custom made. This is very interesting. <sighs> Nothing, make sure I don't photograph my passwords. They're written on post-it notes. Um, Gauge cluster is custom made in the UK. I have a wiring diagram for it. Uh, so we're gonna put it on a, on a oscilloscope and put it on a test bench and kind of test it. Uh, but I have a feeling that the problem is with the wire harness because the, uh, the wires aren't done that well on that particular car. All right, finally, I went to the Pomona swap meet yesterday and I always go to the swap meet thinking, uh, you know what, I'm never gonna buy anything. I already have everything that I could possibly imagine. Sure enough, I come up with some things that I don't have. Here is a uh, camber sign tool that's used for putting on, you put it in front of the cars when you're doing an alignment. It's like from, I don't know, it looks like it's from the 1950s, made in USA. Oh yeah, look at that. It is nine, copyright 1958 by Hunter Engineering Company. This is a cool find, 100 bucks, from Motor Swap Me. Never seen anyone like it. I don't know if anybody else would ever appreciate it, but um thought that was pretty cool the hardest part was just carrying it back to the car it's not heavy but it's bulky a couple other things never seen one of these either um plastic champion spark plug 
thermometer. That's kind of a cool piece. I'm sorry. That was 50 bucks. That's pretty good. Then there's this SO sign. It's porcelain. It looks pretty authentic. We couldn't figure out whether it was real or whether it was fake and weathered. It's got some signs that, you know, people don't usually weather the back like this as much. This one was 50 bucks. So I figured even if it was fake, it was pretty good too. I'm 50-50 on whether that is uh, real or not. We got a little NASCAR uh, inflatable that used to hang in bars and stuff like that. That's kind of cool. It's all very, very cool. And then these are signs from Los Angeles. They're porcelain. Some guy had a whole buttload of them. So, uh, you know, this is like 40 bucks. Thought that was pretty cool. This thing weighs about, oh, I don't know, 20 pounds. Uh, let's see, little stuff. Uh, tire chew toy for Cooper. That should be fun. Now, this is neat too, a 1950s style riveting kit. The HP2 Riveter. Um, no, I don't have a rivet gun for the shop, I don't think. Or at least I didn't think I had one yesterday when I bought this. But, you know, I think it was like 10, 20 bucks. Definitely worth it as a cool piece. Um, friend of mine owns a Ferrari F40. So we got the poacher model kit of the engine. Man, I, I think these are actually expensive. This was like 20 bucks. Here's a little piece that was really, really cool. I've never seen this before. Supposedly you save up in the 1950s or 60s or 70s the uh, um, cereal box tops. You mail them off to General Mills and they will send you a set of coasters. I didn't believe this guy when he told me this story because I've never seen these before. But, um, but he had the box that they came in from General Mills. So look at this. This is one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. And this was 20 bucks too. I couldn't... Uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't say no to that. It's got 10, I think it's 10 or so coasters, is what they call them, you know? They look like this on the back. They actually look kind of modern. I would have never thought that these were from the 50s or the 60s or 70s or whatever it is, except for the fact that it came with the box. The box is not in great condition, but I think this was, uh, you know, that was the guy I think I bought it from, I forget. Uh, anyway, that's a cool, cool, cool find. Um, got a program from 1959 from Laguna Seca, and uh, I'll open this up in a second. Also got Laguna Seca Sprints. Uh, these are 20 bucks a piece. You know, I guess I could have bargained the guy down, but I thought they were pretty good. And then, um, you know, one guy was selling off a whole bunch of license plates, and there's always a bazillion license plates at, at the Pomona, but this guy, every license plate he had was unusual and different. And I like unusual stuff, so... Aruba, One Happy Island, Minnesota, 10,000 Lakes, Arkansas, dealer plate in a weird mint green flavor. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, and then, then I got this um, newsstand rack from uh, Porsche, Yokohama, etc., etc. And uh, I happen to have a Yokohama car. So there we go. Anyway, I don't know if you guys find this stuff interesting, but um, I love finding this stuff. So. Um, uh, yesterday was a good day yeah found a whole bunch of unique stuff anyway it goes into a big pile and then sits there for like six months until i figure out where to actually put it anyway there you go here's something interesting with the uh, lugan sick sprints to notice yesterday i didn't know this but you look at the track it is missing it's chicane that goes right here and goes around the infield and comes back up here and comes around here this is apparently an old old um track uh, layout so I think this one was, uh, it looks like it says 75 there. Don't know, but pretty cool, interesting factoid. Oh, and I almost forgot. So I've got a De Tomaso Pantera coming in. Finally bought one after years, wanting one. And uh, I made this sign because I couldn't find another sign like it. I saw one on Bring a Trailer and uh, I think it's fake. And it sold for like a bazillion dollars. Um, but I figured, okay, well, you know, I'll just make my, make my own. So I scanned a brochure. And, uh, and then bought a lighted frame on Amazon. And, you know, you can just get one that's translucent and it slides through and there it is. Looks pretty good. We'll be hanging that up soon one of these days.